In this lecture, we are going to deal with the pipelined processor design. In the previous lectures, we have seen how to design the data path and control in it for a single cycle processor. From this lecture onwards, we are going to see how to design the data path and control unit for a pipelined processor. So pipelining means it improves the throughput of a digital system. So whatever processor you are taking, if it is a pipelined processor, the throughput of the processor will be increased. It is designed by dividing a single cycle processor into five pipeline stages. You have already seen how to design a single cycle processor. This single cycle processor design itself we are adopting for pipeline processor, but few changes will be there. So the first basic change is that you are subdividing single cycle processor into five pipeline stages. Right? So what is the advantage of that? Five instructions can be executed simultaneously in each stage. Right? Since you are having five stages and you are going to design a pipeline processor, so five instructions will be executed simultaneously in each stage because you are having a five stage pipeline how it is done we will see in the forthcoming slides then as each of the stage has only one fifth of the entire logic the clock frequency will be five times faster how it is done so normally if you are executing a program or normally if you are executing an instruction after complete execution of the instruction is over then only the next instruction will be fetched but here since your complete execution is divided into five stages and each stage you are uh, taking new instruction into uh, the execution so the actual execution time taken for the execution of an instruction will be divided by five if your instruction was taking one cycle in the uh, in the uh, in the previous or five uh, or five cycles in the uh, normal single cycle processor to execute here it will take 5 by 5 so total only one cycle will be taken for the actual execution of the instruction right that means the total clock frequency will be five times faster right so here the latency of each instruction will be unchanged but the throughput will be five times faster that means in each cycle one instruction will be executed and it will be coming out but in the previous case after five stages are over then only the next instruction will be starting its execution here in each cycle one instruction will be executed that's the advantage so these are the five pipeline stages right first one is fetch stage decode stage execute stage memory stage and write back stage so in the fetch stage processor reads the instruction from the instruction memory whatever instruction you have written it will be there in the instruction memory so in fetch stage processor reads a particular instruction from the instruction memory next decode stage so the processor reads the source operand from the register file right so it reads the source operand from the register file so basically register file read will be happening and the decoding of the instruction will be carried out to produce the control signals so in the decode stage it will read the operands from the register file as well as decode the instruction to produce the control signals that is what is done in decode stage in the execute stage processor performs a computation with the ALU that means whatever operation you want to perform that will be done by the ALU in the execute stage then in memory stage processor can read or write the data memory so if you want to access the data memory for read or write operation that will be done in the memory stage and the final stage is the write back stage so here the processor will write the result back to the register file so the register file will be read in the decode stage register file will be written in the write back stage whenever it is applicable right so read will be done in decode stage write will be done in write back stage so this is a pictorial representation of a single cycle processor so first one shows a single cycle processor second one shows the pipeline processor so here you can see in the case of a single cycle processor let us take this will be first instruction this is a second instruction so the first instruction will be fetched 
inside 200 picosecond then it will be decoded and the register will be read in the next 100 say picosecond then it will be executed in ALU in say around 120 picosecond then the memory will be written or uh, read in say 200 uh, picosecond finally result will be written back in say some 60 second right so total after completing the first uh, first instruction execution from fetch stage to write back stage then only the second instruction will be taken that means after each uh, say around 680 picosecond then only the next instruction will be taken in right so in each 680 instruction only one instruction will be coming out in the case of a normal single cycle process so the throughput is very low after each 680 second then only the next instruction will be taken taken in for execution so each instruction will be executed only in 680 picosecond in the normal single cycle process but in the case of a pipeline the processor what is happening means it will be having five different stages as we have shown here but in each stage more than one instruction will be executed so let us take this is the first instruction so in time t equal to zero first instruction will be fetched and the fetching process will be going on till 200 uh, picosecond because reading the memory or the reading the instruction memory and reading or writing the uh, data memory these two operations that is accessing memory will be taking more time when compared to the other stages so here you can see reading of instruction memory and reading or writing of the data memory is taking 200 picosecond right all the others will be taking only less than that so since this is the longest cycle we are fixing the instruction stage uh, time as or pipeline stage time as 200 picosecond so you can see in each stage that is whether it is fetch stage or decode stage or execute stage or memory stage or write back stage you will be taking 200 picosecond as the pipeline stage time right but here in this case you can have uh, say uh, uh, different times based on the operation but in the case of pipelining each stage time period you are fixing it as uh, 200 picosecond right so in the first stage uh, or in the first uh, t equal to zero first instruction will be fetched right then it will be going on till 200 picosecond in 200 picosecond when t equal to 200 picosecond first instruction will be decoded right so decoding means you are reading the register so the read register operation will be always taking place in the second half cycle right so this is a uh, one uh, cycle so in the second half cycle you are reading the register so in the second stage first instruction will be performing the decode operation and the second instruction will be parallelly taken in so in the second stage you can see uh, at uh, t equal to 200 picosecond first instruction will be decoded second instruction will be started fetching operation right then in the after say 420 picosecond first instruction will be in the execute stage right it will be taking only this much time for execution remaining will be vacant then second instruction will be in the decode stage and parallelly the third instruction will be started the fetching operation so in this stage you can see three parallel operation has been done first instruction execute second instruction decode third instruction fetch stage fetch operation in the next cycle first instruction will be performing memory read or write second instruction will be executed third instruction will be decoded and if you are having a fourth instruction that will start fetching here so like this so by uh, uh, performing more operation in each stage Right, or by executing more instruction in each stage you are increasing the throughput that means after each 200 picosecond this is a maximum stage time so after each 200 picosecond one instruction will get executed that means at t equal to say 820 or 8 uh, 
or say around a thousand by thousand picosecond first instruction will be executed by thousand two hundred second instruction will be executed thousand four hundred second third instruction will be executed that means in each 200 picosecond one instruction will be executed right so here in the first case in each 680 picosecond only one instruction will be executed but here since you are having pipelining incorporated in this processor each cycle will be having more instruction executed so in this case in each 200 picosecond one instruction will be executed that means you are reducing the time period by almost divided by 3 here it is 680 picosecond one instruction will be executed here around 200 picosecond that is by around 1 by 3 times you are increasing the speed of execution that is meant by increasing the throughput right here you are getting one instruction executed only in 680 picosecond but here one instruction will be executed in 200 picosecond that is why you are telling that you are increasing the throughput that means here if you are adding 200 plus 200 plus 200 in 600 picosecond three instruction will be executed but here in 680 picosecond only one instruction is getting executed that is a meant by increasing the throughput so here we will see the first figure this was the first figure whatever i have explained i have told so in the single cycle processor first instruction will be read then it will be uh, first instruction will be read then the operands will be fetched ALU will be executing the necessary operation, data memory will be accessed and the return back. The after all these operations of first instruction is completed, then only the second instruction will be started executing. That is what I told. And by adding all the time delays, which we have told in the previous lecture, how to calculate the time delay for executing an instruction. I have already discussed in that. You can go through that if you are having any doubt. So in a single cycle processor, the instruction latency will be by adding up all these things. So here you are ignoring the delays of a multiplexer and register. So you have seen an equation here. This was the equation. So the delays incorporated in the multiplexer and the register uh, you are uh, not using. You are ignoring that. So by ignoring the multiplexer and the register delays, all the other delays when you are adding up, you will be getting around 680. That is what I told. So for fetching 200, decoding say 100, executing 120, memory 200, write back 60. So when you are adding this, you will get 60, say, uh, 680 picosecond. Right? So in, in 680 picosecond, only one instruction will be executed. That means the throughput will be 1.47 million instruction per second. Million instruction. But in the case of pipeline processor, you are fixing the length of the pipeline stage as 200 because it is the slowest stage, right? So the fetching of instruction and fetching of the memory or reading or writing of memory will take more time. So the time taken for that is 200 picosecond. So you are fixing the pipeline stage time as 200 picosecond, right? So at time t equal to 0, first instruction will be fetched at two, uh, t equal to 200 picosecond first instruction will be decoded second instruction will be fetched at 400 picosecond first instruction will be executed second instruction will be decoded third instruction will be fetched so at uh, 400 picosecond you can see that three operations will be done first instruction execute second instruction decode third instruction fetch Right. So, three operations will be done. So, this process will be continuing until the whole instructions are over. So, here the instruction latency will be same as the previous, uh, the, the instruction latency will be 5 into 200. Because for executing an instruction, you will take 20, uh, 200 into 5. For two, 200 for fetch, 200 for decode, 200 for execute, 200 for memory, 200 for write back result. So 5 into 200, total instruction latency will be 1000 picosecond, right? But the throughput is one instruction will be executed in each 200 picosecond. Previously, one instruction will be executed only in 680 picosecond. But here, one instruction will be executed per 200 picosecond. 
so you are increase the throughput from 1.47 billion to 5 billion per second almost five times right so here these are the problems in pipelining because the stages are not perfectly balanced with the equal amount of uh, logic the latency of the pipeline processor will be more than the single cycle right because here the latency was 680 picosecond for executing one instruction but here for executing one instruction it will take thousand so the latency for executing one instruction will be more when compared to the latency for executing one instruction in single cycle so that is one of the uh, problem so latency for one instruction is more but throughput you have increased so here the advantage is throughput increased but the latency will be little bit more similarly the throughput is not quite five times since you are having five stages actually it should be uh, multiplied by five but it is not uh, the correct five uh, five times multiple uh, multiplication factor cannot be applied because so many other uh, uh, logics you have incorporated for implementing the pipeline process so the main advantage of pipelining is you are increasing the throughput of the processor by having different stages and more instruction executed in a single stage so this is abstract view of a pipeline processor so here you can see this im shows the instruction fetch stage then rf shows the instruction uh, the uh, register read and uh, register read and decoding of the instruction that is a decode stage and here this symbol shows the alu execution stage this one shows the data memory read or write stage and finally this stage shows the write back of the register file right so here whichever it is shown in this um, uh, dark color it is show, uh, shown that that stages will be uh, execute that stage will operation will be done in those stages but in here you can see this stage is not shaded so in this stage the data memory operation is not done right but in this instruction data memory operation is performed here data memory operation is not done that is meant by the shading and not shading right and here you can i have already told that the register read operation will be done in the first in the second half of a particular cycle let us take this second cycle so in the second half the register read will be operate uh, will be performed and let us take for the uh, this is the fifth cycle in the first half register write will be performed right so in a single stage itself we can perform register read as well as register write so in second half register read will be performed in a cycle in the first half of the cycle register write will be performed so here uh, you can see different uh, instructions are pipelined so in each pipeline stage you are having five major components that is instruction memory register file read alu execution data memory so data memory here you can perform either read or write and register file write back so these are the five stages so that is what is shown instruction memory register file read alu execution data memory read or write and finally register file write back these are the five stages so here stages which are shaded indicates that that operation is performed there right and in register file the write operation will be performed in the first part and first part of the cycle or first half cycle and the read operation will be performed in the second part of the cycle that is why the read and writing operation can be performed in the same cycle and if you are reading across a row if you are reading say for example sub if you are reading across a row it shows the execution of a particular instruction so if you are reading like this across a row it shows the execution of one single instruction so for example sub in third cycle the sub is fetched and in say fifth cycle it is getting executed so if you are reading across a pipeline stage you can see the execution of a single instruction similarly if you are reading down a column it shows the various pipeline stages of different instructions in a cycle in the sixth cycle 
different stages of operation of different instructions you can see for example if you are taking cycle 6 the or operation is fetched here in the same cycle store operation has read the register file and operation has performed the and function on r13 and r12 then sub operation data memory read or write is not there it is kept as idle why because it is not shaded so if it is not shaded that means this operation is not performed it is idle and in the last and operation write back result is taken place to r r3 right so in the same cycle 6 five operations you have done that means you are reducing the instruction uh, execution time by almost 1 by fifth that is how you are increasing the throughput so uh, the central challenge in the pipeline system is handling the hazards there will be there can be a chances for generating pipeline hazards we will see in details of the hazard in the uh, few other slides so here how this hazard is occurring is that if the result of one instruction has to be taken by the second instruction right so in this case if you are replacing r10 with the r2 what will happen after writing the result back to r2 then only the AND operation will take place right i am replacing say for example i am replacing r10 with r2 what will happen if this AND of add operation has to execute the uh, writing loading the data into r2 has to be over this function should be over then only i can execute this right but here this r2 is written back only in the fifth stage but add operation is performed in fourth stage right so you will be loading the result into r2 only in fifth but here add operation is performed in the fourth stage so before getting the result in r2 you are trying to perform an operation on r2 so what will happen the result will be wrong that is known as the pipeline hazards so there are certain other techniques to handle this that we will see later but this pipeline hazard may occur in the case of pipelining processor that is one of the problem related with the pipeline then so this is a <coughs> complete data path so you are going to design a pipeline data path for a pipeline processor so uh, what you are doing in this figure is you are dividing the pipeline processor you are going to divide the pipeline processor into five stages so for, for prepare for dividing the into five stages first you are stretching out each stage separately you are stretching out in order to accommodate something known as pipeline registers right when you are decoding when you are dividing the whole single cycle processor operation into five different stages each stage after each stage you need to store the intermediate data somewhere that is known as a pipeline stage pipeline registers so for incorporating the pipeline registers after each stage you are stretching out each stages in this figure and here you can see i have incorporated the pipeline registers so these are the pipeline registers so in the first abstract view also you can see this is known as the pipeline register right can you see this is a pipeline register so this is what i have incorporated here so after each stage you are adding so this is fetch stage after fetch stage there is an, one pipeline register after decode stage again pipeline stage register so similarly after each stage you have added one pipeline register and the control signals and the data signals will be extended across the pipeline stages and you can see it is suffixed by f d e m w so let us take if you are taking this say here it is a result e will be explained uh, it, it is having a suffix e and here you are having a suffix w so in each stage you are adding a suffix f d e m and w so here you have added three pipe four pipeline registers for incorporating the pipeline processor design data path design so here this register file this pipeline register file uh, or the register file is peculiar because 
the read operation is performed in the decode stage we i have already told read operation reading of a register file will be done in the decode stage writing operation will be done only in the write back stage right so but in the case of normal register file operation in a single cycle processor read and writing will be done in the uh, in a particular time itself but here read operation will be done in decode stage write operation will be done in write back stage right so in the diagram even though the uh, the write address and the data coming uh, from the data register so the here you are going to say uh, write something normally i told write operation will be done in write back stage but in this diagram even though the register is shown in the decode stage the result or the data that is to be written that is a result w and the address that is to be written both will be coming should be coming from the write back stage right but here in the figure you can see the destination address that is from 12 to 15 this destination address is uh, generated in decode stage and the write back is generated in the write back stage right this will create pipeline hazard right so actually what should be happening the uh, address that is to be written that is connected to a, a3 and the data that is to be written that is w3 both should come from the write back stage but here the problem is that the address that is to be written is generated in decode stage and the data that is to be written is coming back from the fed back from the write back stage this will create pipeline hazard right so you need to solve this problem right how will you solve this problem you are so that, that is a problem here that is a main problem here so you can see so this is the so can you identify any error in this configuration so this was the error what i told now so the destination file register address generation is done in the decode stage so uh, the instruction 12 to 15 in the instruction decoding format instruction bits 12 to 15 shows the destination address so the destination address to be written is generated in the decode stage data that is to be written into the destination address this is the data that is to be written that data is generated in the write back stage both the operations are done in different stages this will create pipeline hazard because the operation may not be done properly so in order to solve this problem so that is known as that is a error which is uh, with the register file write logic that is the error what i have explained now so how will you solve this problem in order to solve this problem you should what they have done is they are extending the uh, the inst uh, the, uh, the uh, destination register address that is bit number 12 to in this figure what what it is done 12 to 15 it is directly connected to a3 that was a problem so in order to solve that problem they are extending this signal they are not connecting it directly to a3 instead of that they are extending that signal through all the stages so here it is wa3d in decode stage when it is extending in the execute stage it is wa3e then in the memory stage it is wa3m and finally in write back stage it is wa3w so they are extending the destination file address uh, uh, line through all the pipeline stages and when it is reaching the write back stage it is fed back to a3 right so now what is what is the advantage address is generated in the write back stage and similarly the data is also fed back so previously the problem was address was generated in decode stage data was generated in write back stage it will create problem for writing but now they have solved by extending this line till the write back stage so now what is the advantage write back address and the write back data both the data and address is generated in the write back stage and both of them are fed back the address is fed back to a3 and the data is fed back to w3 right so by incorporating both the uh, write address signal that is wa3w and the result w that is a write data signal uh, both are generated in the write back stage they have overcome the 
that's the problem right so now both the signals will be fed back in the write back stage to the register file so the proper writing process will happen so that is how they have overcome the error for generation or writing back the result to the register file then the next problem is with the pc logic so in this diagram you can see that each time the program counter is incremented by 4 you can see here this is a program counter each time in each cycle program counter will be incremented by 4 and it is generating pc plus 4 f signal and this is given back to the pc as well as it is given to the pipeline register so the incremented by 4 pc where is fed back to pc as well as to the pipeline register in each cycle then uh, from the pipeline register it is added by 4 and it is given to r15 of the register file for changing the uh, the uh, pc so uh, uh, so on a subsequent cycle the value of both this register is incremented by 4 again so here the value of pc is incremented by 4 in the next cycle that is meant by the subsequent cycle in the next cycle it is again incremented by 4 so two times the value of pc is incremented by 4 using two different adders so thus the pc plus 4 for the instruction in the fetch stage right is equivalent to pc plus 8 for the instruction in the decode stage right so here pc plus 4 in the uh, for an instruction in the fetch stage will be equivalent to pc plus 8 in the uh, for an instruction in the decode stage why because you are adding 4 here again you are adding 4 here for the decode stage right so two times you are adding so how can you solve this problem so you you are adding one more adder here right so instead of that if you are directly feeding a pc plus 4 pc plus 8 signal from here to the decode stage you can remove this adder as well as this pipeline stage so that is what is done uh, the pc optimization is done by uh, done like this you are sending pc plus 8 signal right directly you are sending the pc plus 8 right why because in pc the P, uh, for an instruction in the instruction cycle in the in the fetch cycle will be pc plus 4 for another instruction in the decode cycle it will be pc plus 8 so instead of using an additional adder you are feeding this pc plus 4 in the instruction fetch stage directly as pc plus 8 to the next stage so, right so what is happening here you are able to remove one adder and one pipeline stage here previously one adder was there and pipeline stage was there the the uh, the, in, uh, the instruction was the uh, data was moving like that instead of that you are removing these two and directly connecting that pc plus 4 as pc plus 8 to r15 right because in instruction stage it will be pc plus 4 in the uh, in the decode stage it will be pc plus 8 so directly you are feeding it to r15 right so by using that you are saving a pipeline register and a second adder right so pc is directly fed to r15 in the next stage so that is uh, uh, by that you are uh, you are able to design the data path so this is the final data path for a pipeline the processor only few differences there from a single cycle processor so this is a final data path you have modified the pc pc and you have modified the write address and the write result for the register file right only those two changes you have made then we will deal with the pipeline control so in the pipeline processor control the same control signals are used as in the single cycle processor design right since only few changes are there in the data path the same control signals are used as if you have uh, as you have uh, used in the single cycle processor right and the control unit examines the opcode field and function field to uh, of the instruction in the decode stage to produce a control signals right so based on the opcode and the function field control signals will be generated in the decode stage right but the pro uh, the uh, small change is that the control signals must be pipelined 
through all the stages in order to have the synchronization you can see normally in the uh, single cycle processor you are generating the control signals here and you are feeding back to the uh, different uh, logical components but here most of the control signal should be <coughs> pipelined through all the or the forthcoming stage for example pc source should be extended from decode stage to execute stage to uh, memory stage and finally fed back to the uh, fed back to write back stage right so whatever control signals you are generating it should be extended through all the stages in order to have the synchronization with the data because data will be flowing through each stage which stage decode stage execute stage etc similar fashion the control signals also should flow through different stages so these control lines should be extended through all the other pipeline stages in order to have synchronization with the data right and here you can see that the right register must be also pipeline you can see the right register signal also or the right enable signal also should be pipelined through all the stages and from the right back stage only it should be given as enable right for the register write operation the final register write operation you need to have a write enable you need to have an address and you need to have the data so in the previous case in the data path design we have seen that the the right address and the result you are feeding back from the right back stage so in addition to the right address and the right data you need to feed back the right enable also from the right back stage right so you are feeding back right enable right address and the right data all the three you are feeding back from the right back stage that you should keep in mind right so that is one of the major change you have made in the control uh, unit design the right enable right address and right data all the three you are feeding back to the register file in the right back stage so by this you have finished the uh, pipeline the processor uh, control unit design